Hi and welcome. I'm Sarah and here on Red Rocking Bird we absolutely love air dry clay projects. In one of my previous videos this little mouse was definitely a winner. And so in today's video I'd like to share with you how we can make an air dry clay vase and I'm going to illustrate it with another little mouse. So please come and watch. I'll show you my process step by step and I hope it inspires you to make something similar. The first thing I need to do is decide what shape vase I want to create. So many options, completely up to you. First of all I make a template, fold a piece of paper in half and cut half the design, then when you unfold it reveal the full shape. Air dry clay is a fantastic craft medium and something I really feel you must get your hands on. First of all I like to knead mine and then smooth it into a nice ball. This vase is going to be a slab vase and so for this we roll out sheets of clay. The clay needs to be fairly thick. When rolling clay I always use the method roll and turn, roll and turn and keep going like that so we don't get the clay stuck to the board. Smooth out any imperfections and any bubbles. I have about 700 grams of the clay here but we're going to be cutting our shape out so we use our template as a guide and we can use something as simple as a table knife or we can use a scalpel or any other knife we have to hand. I even use a ruler at times and this can form a nice straight cut. Always do your cutting nice and slow, steady and carefully and that way you get a really nice uniform shape. I've cut two of my shape out as this is the front and the back of the vase. The clay that we peeled up from around the edges can now be rolled together and smoothed together to be used once again for the sides of our vase. If you find it easier you can make a template for the sides of your vase as well. All we need is about an inch thickness to go all the way around the whole perimeter of the vase. To be cut into three sections like you saw there and any leftover clay make sure you wrap that up and we can use it for a later project. When making something like this it's really important that we make a really strong join and so this we use the score and slip method, well I do anyway. So I take something sharp like this little implement that I made in my clay tools video and then I take some of my air dry clay slip which is simply just air dry clay and water mixed together. I do have another video about that as well and we just score the edges that we want to join together. Put a little bit of slip in between, we give a nice gentle bit of pressure to join them a little bit and then we smooth the edges together and we blend those edges together. Use a knife or similar to bring the top part of the clay down onto the bottom part of the clay and then we can take a tiny bit of water on our fingers and blend the sides together. For an even stronger join you can add a coil of clay along the crack and smooth this and blend this in. But here my clay is thick enough that I can take enough clay from one side to the other and then repeat in the other direction as well and get that join really nice. So if your clay is a little bit thinner I do recommend using the coil method along with this. Now that the two sides of the bars are in place I can cut the base to size and add this in in the same way. It's really important to pull enough of that clay from one side to the other and then back again in the other direction to really try and make that clay into one. I've scored the clay again, added some slip and I'm going to add the other side of the vase just like this. Use your hands and pull it all into place and sculpt it and give a nice firm wiggle on the top to make sure that it starts to adhere and join. Then do the same method as before and add a little bit of water on your fingers to blend it all together. I use the knife on the inside of the neck of the vase just to smooth the neck and use the damp sponge to carry on smoothing the clay. I'll leave this to firm up just for a couple of hours. Hopefully you can see it's really important that we make sure we do the walls of this thick enough otherwise it starts to sag and we don't get a perfect design. While I let that dry I'm going to make myself a cup of tea and sit down and relax with the game that I'm currently playing which is June's Journey. 
June's Journey have kindly sponsored this video so let me tell you a little bit more about it. It's really fun. June's Journey is a light-hearted hidden object mystery game where we get to play detective. It's really easy to download this game onto your mobile or device and it's free to do so. The graphics and artwork within the game are fantastic with really fun and beautifully designed scenes. The scenes take us through a murder mystery plot where we have to find clues and solve the mystery. When I'm crafting, I relax and I can forget about the world around us. This game also transports me into another world for a while. The game is set in the 1920s and has a great cast of characters. The mansion in the game is on an island and throughout the game you collect coins and jewels etc to be able to purchase new items for your mansion and gardens in your game. If you fancy playing this game too, please download for free by clicking the link in the description below or via the QR code on the screen. I've come back to my clay after a couple of hours and it started to firm up a bit so I can actually smooth it and shape it that little bit more because it's a bit firmer and less fragile. The walls of the clay have caved in just a little bit so I'm able to push them out a little with the knife as I did there and get the sponge and smooth it out some more and then I leave it to dry fully while I do some of my illustrations and decide what little mouse is going to be on this vase. I really like the idea of having one stem that will come out the top of the vase and so have something that the little mouse will be holding and it looks like they're holding either the flower or it could be something like a paintbrush. As these would make really cute paintbrush pots as well. If you're not so confident with illustrating or drawing then you can find an image you like online and you can trace this just as long as you're only using it for personal use. I'm going to transfer this little mouse onto my clay so I have some tracing paper here and I'm simply tracing it with a pencil onto the tracing paper. I really love this kind of project, it's really fun and I look forward always to seeing what the result is as they're always that little bit different. Illustrating is a real passion of mine so it's really nice to be able to incorporate this into an air dry clay project like this. I want my little mouse to be facing the same way as I've drawn it so I'm going to turn it over and draw again on the other side over the first traced pencil lines. Then I set this tracing paper aside waiting for my air dry clay to fully dry. This has been drying for a week and is now completely bone dry. A few dimples and lines here and there in the air dry clay but not to worry we have the sandpaper and we can sand these away. You really don't want to breathe in these dust particles so I make sure I wear a mask. This sandpaper is 120 grit so it's fairly fine but you can go finer if you wish. I find this one's good for this kind of project. As I'm going to create quite a bit of dust with this, I'm going to save that dust, add a tiny dot of water and make it into some air dry clay slip for a next project. Sand in whatever way you prefer, using a little block might help you. I quite often like using it in small sections like this or if using a larger area you can put the sandpaper flat down on the surface and then move the air dry clay over this in this kind of way. Like with every stage of the process, go with whatever works well for you. There's no right and no wrong, we're just being creative and enjoying the whole process. Once you've sanded enough, make sure you clear away the area. I've still got a few sections that have a few dimples, I'm really not worried about this. It gives it that handmade feel. I then take a really slightly damp cloth and sponge this over the air dry clay and over the surface just making sure we clear all that debris. We're now good to go with the painting so I first of all need to transfer my little mouse onto the air dry clay. Because there's a pencil line on the reverse of the tracing paper we can add some pressure and this pencil line transfers onto the clay. You can of course use one of my other transfer methods but my printer is currently out of ink. So there I have my rough outline and it's now time to decide what colours we were going to paint this. For the last one I did the nice light blue so for this I thought I'd go for a darker navy blue. So the main body of the vase is going to be this dark colour. 
I contemplated painting it red, maybe I should have, maybe let me know in the comments below at the end what you think, or do you prefer the original colours of the light blue, or something completely different? I could paint the whole vase this dark colour to begin with, but I just find it that bit easier to transfer my lighter image onto there and then we can paint this afterwards, otherwise I would just end up painting this white first on top of the dark and then colouring it in as such. I'm using a nice fine paintbrush to paint on my acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be too accurate as we're going to paint the little mouse later on. Blue has a really strong pigment to it so it colours the clay really quite easily and gives a good coverage. Many people ask how to paint without brush strokes. A nice soft brush is a good start. Don't add too much paint at one time and smooth out your brush strokes in the same direction. I'm sure people can think of other tips as well so please do comment below. And above all I say everything is about practice and just buy as best quality art materials as you can afford. As you can see here I've made plenty of the same colour so I don't run out for my second coat. It's always better to have too much than too little. As I said earlier in the video this little mouse was definitely a winner and I'm now just thinking how is this going to look on my darker colour. I'm just going to go for it and see what happens, I'm sure it'll be lovely, but if you want to you can do your design on a piece of paper or a sketch pad before you dive straight into painting it on your clay. The first coat of acrylic paint is now fully dry and you can see it's a little bit patchy but it's fairly smooth so I go in again with another coat of paint. You can of course buy tubes of paint in every kind of colour but I tend to buy the primary colours and a black and a white and that way I can make every single colour there is. Now that the second coat of my blue is dry I can go in and paint white over the mouse. This white just gives it a nice base and then I can add my paint over the top of this. That way the whole of the air dry clay has been primed with the acrylic and everything is sealed with the acrylic paint. We still need to seal this at the end but I'll show you that later on. I've added just the tiniest bit of black to the white to make a lovely soft grey and I go in and add some of this to the mouse. I normally do my illustrations on watercolour paper and use watercolour but this is a very different process and takes a little bit longer I find when using the acrylic paints on something like this whereas I tend to be quite quick with my watercolours and let the paint do its own magic so for me it makes a nice change to be painting on my air dry clay when I do so. This little mouse is going to be holding a bunch of mistletoe or foliage so I'm adding that in in white first. So the intricate detail like this can be painted on white over the top of the dark as there's no way I could have painted all that dark around the negative space of this so it's easier to do it in this way. But as I say with everything it's your project, if you have a way of doing things you do it your way. In life itself we all have our own ways so whatever works for you. With the acrylic paint now I'm just building up the detail so we typically go in with our light colours and build on those colours till we get that bit darker. She's a little fluffy mouse so we can add lots of texture with all those little brush strokes and for this kind of painting it's okay to let the acrylic paint build up and give itself its own texture. I added a little pink in for her cheek then and adding in more details here around the arms as she's clutching this little bunch of foliage. If you're not confident enough to paint on the air dry clay like this, then I don't know whether you saw my Christmas video that I've just posted. Well in that one I did some napkin designs where literally you put the napkin onto the air dry clay. So take a look at this. That way you don't need to be an artist in any shape or form. The paintbrush I'm using is super fine with a really nice point to the tip and I'm now adding some of the green in. Over here on Red Rocking Bird I've explored many ways to decorate the air dry clay so please do take a look through all my various air dry clay projects. I try to make my videos quite varied where you get in some of them lots of ideas quickly all in one go or like with this one more of the process and more of how I do things and more of me talking about the different aspects of the painting or the air dry clay just like this. 
I'm always exploring many different crafts as well, but I will always keep coming back to the air dry clay projects. It's definitely one of those favourites over here, I think you'll agree. Please comment below which is your favourite video so far. You really do need a steady hand with a fine paintbrush like this and I painted a little bit too much of the leaf there in white so I'm going to fix this a little bit later with our darker colour. I make sure I keep all of that darker colour with a bit of a lid on till the end of the project just in case I need to use a little bit more. I know this is quite intricate but one of my favourite actual pot designs was this one that I'll put up on the screen here that is simply the same dark colour but then I just added some spots on with the end of my paintbrush or pencil. It's a fairly straightforward process for beginners and I think really quite effective and pretty. I let these colours dry and then go in with some black acrylic paint as my little outline and to add the little details in. When doing this for my illustrations I normally use a dip pen and some ink and I love the quick process and the scratchy nature of doing that so it's quite a nice change as I said again when I'm painting on the air dry clay in this way. Sometimes I really like it when projects take a bit longer like this and I really spend my time to get it just right. Other projects I like it to be quite quick how about you? Do you like to be slow and methodical or get to the end super quick? I'm having fun adding the outlines and all the little details with my black acrylic paint. And this little mouse is starting to come to life. But the question is, is she as cute yet as the first one? All the little mice definitely have their own little character. The other options for these vases is adding texture instead of paint. In another of my videos I added lots of different textures to different items and this little vase would look super cute in any of those. The extra bonus with adding textures means that we don't have to sand and smooth the clay as the textures give it that rustic feel and they really are lovely so please do try those as well. A big thank you to everyone that's subscribed to my channel and keeps commenting and hitting that like button. I really do appreciate it, so thank you. If you've not subscribed yet, please do click the link below and subscribe. It's completely free and does help my channel out a lot. Adding in those tiny little details, those little bits of shine really do matter as they bring the little character to life. I have the red of the Wellington boots so I just want to add a little bit of red so I can add some berries into the foliage there. And I realised I forgot to paint in those green leaves so I've done so. And so that she's not floating in midair, I'm just adding a little bit of something at the bottom so it looks like she's standing on this. With the dark blue I feel she's standing in the night sky so what better to add than a few little stars. I want them nice and fine and delicate, a little bit tricky with this kind of design but we can add those in and then don't worry we can tidy them up with a bit of our base colour and that way they look really fine and lovely and it's easier to get the detail in this way. So always go back over things if you need to like I did earlier with parts of it. Adding in some little details like this really bring the whole piece together. Our little mouse is almost complete so I'm going to set it aside and let that acrylic paint dry for quite a few hours. Do make sure it's 100% dry before you go in with any varnish. I've let this dry for quite a few hours and so now I'm going to varnish it. I've done a video all about the different varnishes that I use so please take a look at that one if you need some more information but I'm using this water-based varnish which is nice and glossy as I want it to have a ceramic feel. As I'm adding the varnish I've realised I've not let those little dots of paint because they were quite thick I've not let them dry fully and so I've smudged them. So I'm just going along and trying to readjust those. I think I've done an okay job with it. With this varnish you do have to make sure you just do it nice and quickly and get the varnish on there in one go. In these areas I've scrubbed the paintbrush a bit too much so I'm going to let it dry and then come back and give it another coat of varnish and this time just paint the varnish over that little bit quicker. 
I've let it dry fully now and I absolutely love how this has turned out. With one stem in, with a few stems in, it looks lovely. I really hope you enjoyed that air dry clay project and that it gives you some inspiration to try something similar. I'm going to have another game on June's journey. Please take a look at the link in the description below the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next creative video.